All right, what's up, Bulldogs? All right, today I have Jaspreet from Minority uh, Mindset. I've been watching his channel for for quite some time. One of the channels that's been popping up on my feed as, as far as financial stuff. Really good, solid advice. I pretty much agree with everything that Jaspreet's been saying, and it's just it's just real good, you know, common sense as far as investing, what's going on. And so I thought it'd be cool to have him on the channel, and uh, and we were talk about some things, talk about inflation, talk about what's going on. Where should you put your your money today and, and kind of the mistakes that you might be making that's that's kind of keeping you poor when you when you understand what's happening in the the bigger space of things is financially so uh welcome jasper glad to have you on here oh man thank you for having me it's an honor to be on with you yeah yeah well it's uh, like i said i i'm i'm uh i'm real happy because i've been watching your your stuff and it, it's real good and so when one of your guys reached out to me and said hey you know let's do a collab i was like wow this is awesome this is uh you know <laughs> <laughs> would, would love to so yeah, let's do so it, man. Yeah. So tell me a little bit before we dump into kind of some of the finance stuff. Like, how did you get started on YouTube? Like, how did you get get into this space? YouTube was an accident. I, mm. I never started YouTube with the intention of starting a business or making money. Um, I was running other businesses. I was doing other things in real estate and I was launching a sock company. And when I was launching this company, I got scammed by a fake marketing company. They said, you know, Oh, give us your budget and we'll help you do X, Y, Z. We'll get you such big results. And I was a little bit skeptical, but they said, don't worry. We have a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're not fully satisfied, we'll give you all your money back. So mm -hmm. I said, okay. Uh, I gave them our marketing budget. And long story short, they ran away with the money. Oh, they didn't yeah, do anything yeah. and, and uh, I didn't hear from them again. So now, you know, I didn't grow up with any sort of financial education or entrepreneurship education. No one in my family was an entrepreneur. No one in my family was a real estate investor. No one in my family talked about money. I mean, it was taboo in my house. Right. And so the fact, you know, when I wanted to be an entrepreneur, I, not only did I not get encouragement, I did not get any support. I had to start all my early businesses in secret because that was like really bad. I was supposed to be a doctor. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I was irritated, man. Like I was, I was angry when I started learning about money because I was like, why didn't I learn about this before? I was angry right. when I started learning about investing because why didn't we learn about this in school? And I was angry that now I'm trying to start a business and honest entrepreneurs are getting screwed over and scammed. So then I went on to a, a platform called Udemy and I created a course called how to launch a business without getting screwed over. And I sold it for like okay. seven bucks. Yeah. My intention was not to make money. It was just to really just put this content out there. And uh, it's not there anymore, but it was under the alias minority mindset because I always felt like I thought differently than the majority of people. Mm, Anyways, okay. people love this class. And then they uh, said, you know, you need to get on social media. So I was like, okay. So I started an Instagram page under minority mindset where I posted, again, same stuff, more entrepreneurship stuff, a little bit of finance here and there. And then I would get these DMs saying, hey, man, you really need to start a blog. I'm like, well, English is my second language, so I'm not starting a blog, uh, right. but I can start a YouTube channel. So I started a YouTube channel kind of just as a hobby uh, because I was doing a whole bunch of other things. And then it kind of transitioned from just entrepreneurship to more of things that I wish I learned when I was younger and yeah. especially in the financial education, money management, and investing route. And then YouTube started to pick up, it started to grow. And then I loved it. I love financial education. I would have never thought that I could, uh, you know, do this as, a business to talk about financial education and educate the things that I wish I knew. But here we are now. We're one of the fastest growing financial education and media companies on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. That's a quite, quite the story coming up. And yeah, I mean, I had a kind of similar background too. Like no one taught me any of this stuff. No one was entrepreneur or real estate investor. I started investing in real estate, just figuring it out on my own, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and starting businesses and, and it's like, and it's great. That's why it's so great the what you're providing on youtube is because all these young guys i'm jealous of them now you know i, t I talk about all the time there's guys in my community they're like 20 years old they're like learning all this stuff and i'm like shit if i was that young and i and i, I know this right stuff, i would be you know youtube has awesome. changed the world it yeah, is changing yeah. the world uh, i love it you know providing making financial education accessible to people who want to learn i mean man it, it's crazy yeah so let, let's talk a little bit about what's going on today what's your kind of take on this as far as you know w what's happening here with inflation with i mean the the asset prices stock market's still going up even though we've had like one of the worst 
possible economic crisis in in you know in recent history you know gold is is not going up even though it's you know traditionally a hedge and you know and and we've got crypto that you know it's 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 been going up now but it who, who knows what's what's going to happen what's your kind of take on where we're at right now um, so the best way to understand where we are is really to look at history mm -hmm. and in 2020 we were in the worst recession since the great depression yeah and that recession lasted two months <laughs> two months right. Right. why did yeah. it only last two months because the federal reserve bank stimulated our way out of this biggest recession since the great depression we printed so much money that we were able to pull ourselves out of this mess now it's great in the short term because the stock market was in free fall and then it just shot right back up the economy was in free fall and then it shot right back up and so what are we doing well the first thing you have to understand is every asset class goes through cycles you have times where markets go up and you have times where markets go down this is part of the economy now what it seems is the better reserve bank is trying to desensitize us from risk they're trying to eliminate the downside and only see upside which sounds good in theory hey you invest your money you can't lose money you can only make money but what is the real cost of that because what they're doing in order to inflate the economy is they are printing money essentially and injecting this money into our economy whether it's in the form of stimulus checks or unemployment checks or bailouts for corporations or or money that's just being injected into institutions or whatever it is they're injecting this money into the economy in one way or another but what does this really mean well if you look at ancient history go back to the ancient roman empire it used to be based on silver right. which means that when you worked you would get paid in silver coins and then the roman empire the government wanted to expand faster they wanted to invest more in their infrastructure so what they did was instead of paying people in silver they started debasing their silver they started mm -hmm. mixing it with other metals and this helped the economy boom for a little while because now all of a sudden people were able to earn more coins but eventually the workers said these debased silver coins these coins that are mixed with other metals aren't worth as much as my previous fully silver coins so we need more money and this kept going on and on and on you debased the value of the currency and eventually led to the collapse of the roman empire you saw the same thing happen in the weimar republic modern day germany yeah. where they were trying to print their way through the war and fund the war and hoping that they would win the war and that all this money printing would then come to good use essentially well what happened was they printed too much money and their currency became worthless so then if you went to the store and you wanted to buy a loaf of bread you took a wheelbarrow full of cash and then the owner would say you take your cash just leave the wheelbarrow you know yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah. so what happens anytime you debase the value of your currency is the value of your currency goes down because you're essentially diluting the value of the currency and between 1913 and 2021 the us dollar has lost 96 percent of its value 96 wow. percent and now as we print more and more money what do you think is going to happen to the value of the dollar it is going to continue to go down now we have an advantage here in the united states because we are the strongest military we have the strongest military we have the strongest economy in the world we have the most powerful country in the world and we are the world's reserve currency so we have that going for us which means that you know are we going to enter hyperinflation probably not you know we, we we are the country that everybody aspires to be right but what are we doing we are diluting the value of our dollars through inflation and inflation is good if you're financially educated because now you own the assets which are now worth more uh you know are they really worth more what's really happening is compared to fiat currency the currency your, your asset is really just costing more dollars but for the majority of people who are not financially educated this is bad because now you're earning a fixed salary maybe you get a little bit of a raise the housing costs are more grocery costs are higher gas prices are higher vacation costs are higher healthcare costs are higher because the cost of everything the cost of everything keeps going up because the value of a dollar is going down and you know you know i talked about me being 
angry when I started learning about money management and investing and entrepreneurship because I never learned about these things. The crazy thing is we, you know, we hope that our system, the government, will do the best for us, the people, right? right. But we really have to understand what everyone's intention is because right now the United States government has almost 29 trillion, 29 trillion dollars with the national debt. And so they have to pay this money back, right? The government earns money through taxes, we'll call it earn or whatever, they, they take money through taxes yeah. and part of your tax, our tax dollars go to paying back this debt. Well, it is impossible to pay back $29 trillion. And even the payments on $29 trillion are a lot. So the government needs more inflation. They want to devalue the currency because now they can pay back the $29 trillion with cheaper money. Because it's less. Yeah, it's effectively less. Yeah. yeah. If we saw deflation, meaning the value of the dollar becomes more, that means your $29 trillion of debt would now be even more expensive. The government cannot afford that. And so when you hear uh, the Federal Reserve Chairman Jim Powell come out and say that inflation is transitory and you hear the president come out or it doesn't matter what side you're on, you, you know, you see it on both sides, say that inflation will will uh, recover and, you know, you don't got to worry about this money printing. You got to understand the government wants inflation because that's the only way they can pay back their debt. And so this is why financial education is so important, because when you keep relying on other people to take care of you, you are now at their mercy yep. and you need to be the one that's financially educated that way you can take care of yourself that way you're not relying on other people who may or may not have your best interest at mind maybe the government does care about its people fine but i don't want to rely on the government to take care of me i want to make sure i can take care of myself and my family and my community without relying on somebody else to do that first yeah yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, it's it's interesting. A couple of points from there. You know, I, I think I think the the idea that like we're the world reserve currency is is why we can get away with it, right? Is because we're essentially diluting. We're we're taxing the whole world, <laughs> right? Because you're diluting their currency because they're pricing everything as price in dollars, and they're holding dollars as their you know their, their real you know secure. Uh, you know, valuable, uh, safe, you know, uh, mo money, hard money, that's their hard money, the rest of the world, and we're diluting it. So we're getting away with it. But how long can we get away with it before other countries say, hey, wait a minute, you're, you just taxed us, you just taxed us to pay for your for your debt. Uh, you know, you, you just tax us and then gave us our own money to pay, pay your debts. And uh, it, but there's this whole like, I, I think so many people are caught up, they, they're believing this lie of the, the Keynesian economics in, in their you know instead of the austrian like they're they're believing that somehow if you kick this can down the road and and you know in, in the the federal reserve says stuff about oh we're not really printing money we're just we're just increasing the amount of of credit available to banks but we could retract that what do you think about all of these kind of you know because people make these justifications and say oh yeah no, no no it's not it's not like that it's not like they're just printing money these things aren't true you know they can contract it at any time what what are your thoughts on on that? Is that accurate, or is that just some some more uh, another line we're being fed so we don't get too upset about it? Well, uh, we don't need to talk opinions. We can just talk facts. Yeah. At the time when we're recording this video, of us recording this video, mm -hmm. the Federal Reserve Bank is still printing a hundred and twenty billion dollars every single month and injecting this into the markets to keep the stock market afloat. Why? They want to keep investors confident and they want to keep institutions confident in our economic system and in the market system to keep people pouring the money in the markets because that's what you know they want. Why don't they stop if our economy is recovering, if people are going back to work? Although uh, the most recent job report was a complete failure. It right. said that it, we were nowhere near our estimates of how many people should have gone back to work, which is nuts. I mean, uh, I went to Chipotle. I was at the gym on Sunday. I had arms. I had a two-hour arm workout. Yeah. And, and my routine is, you know, I like to work out uh, and go watch the Lions game. I'm a Detroit Lions fan. And uh, what I like to do is get some Chipotle. Yeah. Right back, after my lift, right? Double meat or double. <laughs> you go to Chipotle. I got to Chipotle. Yeah. It was closed. And oh, there yeah, was a sign. Yeah. Yeah. And this was just a couple of days ago. So we're talking about October. There was a sign yeah. that said, we don't have enough 
labor. So we're not opening until 4 p.m. Yeah, I was like, you got to be kidding me. Hey, you know, it's like when it affects the, the <laughs> your yeah. workout, now I'm getting irritated. But, you know, yeah. this, this, is, this is our economy still. And so why is the Federal Reserve Bank not stopping the money printer yet? Well, we saw the same thing happen in the 2008 crash, where after the crash happened, the Fed kept printing money, pouring it into the markets, and then one day they stopped. And when that stopped, uh, all of a sudden you saw a lot of people start selling. And this created a, a kind of a mini stock market crash, which was exactly. labeled a taper tantrum. The Federal Reserve Bank tapering their, what they call quantitative easing, their money printing. Uh, they started tapering back on this and it caused a tantrum in the stock market, causing the stock market to uh, kind of have a mini crash. Well, what they're trying to avoid now is another taper tantrum. And right. so uh, can this money be retracted? In some instances, sure, but what they're also doing with low interest rates is they allow banks to now lend money very cheaply. So now you go to the bank and you start borrowing money. Well, the banks, if you go borrow a million dollars in the bank, the bank doesn't have a million dollars just sitting there, right? I go and deposit a hundred dollars in the bank. They're going to put nine or $10 in reserves. And then they're going to take this other $90 and lend it out. Uh, the money's going to go to somebody. They're going to take this $90 and deposit it into their bank. That bank is going to put, $10 in reserves and then lend out the other 80 and it goes on and on and on and on. So you create an infinite supply of money through this because now the banks don't have all this money in reserves. They get this money from the Federal Reserve Bank. So when you go and take a million dollar loan from the bank, this is now money that's been created. You're essentially creating this money because the bank doesn't just keep this million dollar in reserve somewhere. So you take this million dollars and you go out and buy a home. How is the Fed going to now destroy a million dollars when you already taken that cash and used it right so you know we, we have printed something around 40 percent of all of our u.s dollars in history in the last uh 18 months between 2020 and 2021 yeah inflation is a real thing we are diluting the value of our dollars i mean yeah we have supply chain issues we have labor issues that that that's a fact but we're also diluting the value of our dollars which means you need to get financially educated and do something about this i mean it's kind of like a double-edged sword because on one side, yeah, you, you don't want to just keep holding on to all of your cash because if you are, you're, you're losing your value. On the flip side, cash does have its value when a crash happens. Yeah, cash exactly. has its value when a crash happens because then you have the opportunity to not go out and buy these assets at a discounted price. So you need to really just be aware and you, you no one can time the market. No one can predict the market. No one knows exactly what's going to happen, but you need to be aware that way you can protect yourself from whatever happens. Yeah. And, see, and I think that's the difficulty now, see, because I've been trying to figure this out myself is I've been sitting on a lot of cash because I'm waiting for, you know, in, in 2008, I bought a lot of real estate when, when the market crashed. Of course, we didn't have massive inflation at that time, you know, so it was a little bit different, but at the same time I'm looking at, okay, I have, I have a bunch of cash. Well, I put some money into physical gold. Uh, unfortunately, gold isn't, performing as a hedge like it normally would in this case. You know, I've got some money in cryptocurrency, but I don't really want to put a lot of money in the stock market knowing that a crash could be imminent as soon as, you know, they stop printing this money and lifting up the stock market because I feel like that's all inflated, it's all artificial like it sh we should not have that kind of performance in the stock market and the worst economy we've ever had in the last, you know, almost 100 years. Uh, and then and then you've got uh, real estate, which I have, I own a lot of real estate, but I don't really want to buy more at these prices, knowing that that also is going to crash. We have all these, uh, you know, moratoriums that have ended. And now all these we're going to have all these REO properties on the market again. So it's kind of a weird spot to be. It's like in all a lot of my coaching clients are asking me, well, what do I do? Where do I put the money? What do I invest? And the only thing that I can really come up with that makes a lot of sense is, you know, put some percentage in crypto, I think is is, is is smart as a speculative move. But I'm saying put money into invest in business. If you can invest in yourself and your own business or in someone else's business, because that cash flow is is something that is going to we know that that's a perfect hedge against inflation is because that business charges more money. Prices go up. So they they stay afloat. That's where you can keep your money safe. But I don't really have a, a really great answer other than that because if you stockpile that cash yeah you're losing so much value and you just hope that the asset prices of real estate drop more significantly than you lose to inflation which i guess is 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 likely but it's, it's kind of a, it's like holding a hot potato what's your 
what's your take? Like, where should I do if I've got 100K or something like that, you know, right now? To, what's what's the smart move? Well, I can't give financial advice because uh, I'm an attorney that gets me in trouble. But okay. what, I'll tell you what I do. Yeah. Uh, I invest my money in five places. Okay. I invest in real estate, stocks, mm -hmm. businesses, cryptocurrency, and commodities like gold. Yep. So, you know, like like you, I, I, I bought a good chunk of real estate after the 2008 crash. Now, when I, I'm still buying real estate, I'm just being way pickier than I was before because prices are a lot higher and I'm not trying to overpay for real estate. I want right. to find deals where I'm getting some good cash flow deals that, you know, I'm, I'm looking for, which is a lot more work now. It takes me a lot yeah. <laughs> longer to find a good deal than it did a few years ago. So I'm putting in a lot more work in order to find the deals, but it, it's not getting emotional with anything. Like I was in Austin recently and I was looking at some of the real estate there and in the downtown area on LoopNet, they were listing some of these properties at a one and a half cap, even a one cap, one, which means oh, a 1% return on your money. Uh, wow. If I invested a million dollars, I will get a 1% return on my money. And so that was like, okay, that's cool. Maybe Austin will be the next big city, but I don't want to speculate. I don't like speculating. I want to see cash flow today. I'm going to, I'm going to make my investment based off of today's prices. Exactly. Uh, so, so with real estate, I, you know, I'm, I'm being very picky. I'm still buy deals, but I'm going to be very picky. Yeah. With yep. stocks, I have two strategies. I, I still dollar cost average every single week. I have money going into ETFs because I believe in the American economy at me. I still believe we're the strongest economy in the world. And I, I am a, I'm a big believer in that, but I also invest into individual companies. Again, very, very, very picky. Not investing the way that I would if we were at a bottom, you know, it's just you got to be pickier. Uh, and, right. and so that means I'm not buying as much, but I, I will buy if I find something good. Third is is businesses. Uh, I love, like you said, you know, I, I love working with entrepreneurs. I love working with startups specifically. So I am investing in in startup companies. I'm working with entrepreneurs. I, I love it because I'm an entrepreneur myself. I think right. entrepreneurs can save the country and the world. I'm, I'm a huge fan of entrepreneurs and I love to support them through either my advice or, or whatever I can do to help out. So I'm investing in them and, and it, this is more accessible now than ever. Um, there's a regulation called regulation CF regulation crowdfunding, which allows regular people, non-accredited investors to invest in startups. Now got to understand that investing in startups is very risky because right. there's a high chance that your startup can completely fail. Most, most startups fail. Uh, but you also have the opportunity for higher upside. And so you can go to something like WeFunder or Republic or uh, what's the other one? Uh, there's one more, Start Engine. And, and these are places where now you can invest in startups that are looking for capital. Again, high risk, high potential reward. Then uh, cryptocurrency. Look, man, cryptocurrency is going to have a lot of implications in the future. Is cryptocurrency going to go straight up? No, we have a lot of risk in cryptocurrency, high, high, high risk. We could see another 2001 style crash in cryptocurrency. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I believe in the technology behind cryptocurrency and there's a lot of different ways that you can earn money or, or, or store money in cryptocurrency. Like, obviously you can you know, invest in things like Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and hope to see appreciation. I'm not a huge speculator. I don't really like doing a lot of that. But what you can also do is you can earn interest on some of your money. So like you can put your money in a stable coin uh, which are a lot of times they don't, they don't change. They stay at around a dollar and there are certain platforms out there which will pay you seven, eight, close to 9% a year on your money. So you take your dollars, you take a hundred dollars, you convert it to a hundred stable coins uh, and now you can earn seven, eight, nine percent a year on that stable coins and you can convert it back to dollars whenever you want. Now, again, it has risks. These money market accounts like this are, are not, they don't like to call themselves money market accounts for one, right. but they're also not, <laughs> not FDIC insured. insured. Yeah. They're not FDIC insured. And so, you know, there's also a risk that your stable coin could go bankrupt. And so you got to be smart. You got to be educated and you want, you want to be aware of the risks that are involved, but you know, cryptocurrency, I, I, I believe that it's going to have a lot more implications in the future. And then, uh, commodities like gold. No, I don't care what gold prices are for me. Yeah. It's insurance. It's, yeah, exactly. it, it, it's just something that I own. It's money. I look at it like money. It, it, it's just a place where now I take my dollars and I, and I use it to buy some gold because, and, and it's not a huge chunk of my portfolio, but I do own gold as, as 
a hedge and it, it is just money the way that i look at it. that's like you know savings essentially and it's just things that i keep and i hold i never look at and i just just keep adding more of that a little bit here and there yeah yeah no that i think that makes a lot of sense yeah if you can find some good real estate deals cash flow deals right um you know it, it sounds like you've got a very similar mindset in, in terms of you know i consider anything speculation that requires a future event to occur yeah. And an investment is something that doesn't require a future event to occur. So if I, when I'm looking for real estate, I'm looking for investments. I'm looking for it to have a good return already. And then if it appreciates in the future, great. That's my lottery ticket for the future. But, um, but yeah, the same way I'm, I'm looking at yeah. gold as, as, as stable, hard money in, in the sense that, you know, if, if we do have massive inflation, then, Hey, okay, well that money, you know, you can't make a lot more gold. So it's got to have some value, but it is alarming. I think to see that the gold isn't going up. I feel like that market is somehow being manipulated because with this massive inflation, you know, if gold is priced in dollars, you would expect, okay, well, you know, go, the value of gold hasn't changed. So it should go up relatively to the dollar as the value of the dollar is going down. But we're not seeing that right now. You know, maybe we're going to see there a rapid run up in the future. But um, but yeah, yeah it, it, it Peter Schiff. Or, yeah, Peter Peter Schiff is a, a guy on YouTube who loves talking about gold. You know, I don't know too much about the economics of gold in that sense. I understand it as a store of value, and I don't really track its day to day price. I own some of it, and I just buy a little bit more. And I want it. That is my store of value. Uh, you know, it, whether it goes up or down. I don't really care. Uh, yeah. it, it it takes time, effort, and labor to produce yeah. gold, and it it has been a currency for centuries, and so you know that I understand that aspect of it. So that's that's how I look at it. Yeah. And and in terms of investing, like what you were talking about, I think what what every viewer needs to understand is what's right for me or you might not be right for them. And every person in their stage of life is mm -hmm. going to have different goals. Like if I was 22 years old and I had, let's just say 10 grand to my name, yeah. I'm going to be a lot more risky because exactly. I don't have a wife. I, I, you know, I don't got, when you don't have things to worry about, if, if you don't have financial responsibilities and you have the ability to be more risky, you can because you know you right. also have time to get that money back. You know, I'm, I'm, I still have a portion of my portfolio for more your know, speculative, risky things, but that is a very small portion. Right? I understand that all this money can just leave and go away and never come back. Right. Um, and and so, you know, there's a time and place to be risky, and it's just understanding what is your risk tolerance and at what point in your life. You know, without risk, there's no reward. You always have to be able to take risk, but it's it's how much, right? When you you know when you're 22, you take a different risk than when you're 45. And it's just, it's just how do you, at, at your point in life where you are today, what are you comfortable taking risks on? And, and this, like, for example, cryptocurrency is, is one of the greatest transfers of wealth ever. I mean, there's a guy that I know, he worked a regular job and he, um, uh, he started buying Bitcoin and a couple of the cryptos years ago. And now he is, uh, a millionaire in cryptocurrency and he would have never became a millionaire through his job he, i mean think he's probably oh, yeah. making like you know just a, a, a average median salary but he is a millionaire in crypto and now he is looking to move outside of the united states because of the way united states are are, are regulating um cryptocurrencies and he's looking to move to a country which is now adopting bitcoin as its national currency now do i advise people doing that no, <laughs> but, but I mean, it's just the way the world is changing. Some yeah. people who, you know, this would have never crossed my mind that somebody like this would, would consider leaving the country because of, of currency issues. I mean, it, it is, it, the world is changing and it, obviously cryptocurrency is, is, is a big leading factor in that. I mean, it, whether you believe in crypto or hate crypto, you cannot ignore the fact that crypto has made many people very wealthy. Does that mean that you're going to see the same trajectory next year and the year after? No, you can never predict that. You could see a massive crash in cryptocurrency. You're just like you could see a massive crash in the stock market. Exactly. There is risk. And so you just got to understand, again, where, where is your risk tolerance and what you believe in? And the way that you can mitigate risk is by learning. Yep. Learn. Learn about the things that you are unfamiliar with before you start to hate it. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting sidetracked, but ignorance is 
the leading cause of just so many problems in the country. I mean, you, first we can look at uh, just ignorance about people. Why do we have so much racism? Why do we have so much hate in this country? Because people are ignorant of other cultures and other people. You know, they, they don't know what people's backgrounds are. And so they, you know, they get upset. Why are people uneducated about money because we're ignorant about it obviously we're never taught about this at home because most of us don't grow up with rich and wealthy parents we're not taught about it in schools because teachers don't understand money uh and you know if more people were financially educated it would not be so good news for banks so you know it's just kind of the way the world is but educating yourself about the things that you don't understand and then understanding both sides of the argument is so 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 important i mean the the probably the biggest example of this is politics uh, people will look at one side mm -hmm. and fall in love or hate it and then completely if you see anything on the other side whether it's right or left you hate it versus how would you educate yourself on both sides that way you're aware because if we can have dialogue, if we can converse, then we can really change the world. But right now we're in such a polarized world. And it's not just politics, it's everything. It's a polarized it's world yeah. where you know we now we're running on emotions. You disagree yeah. with me, I hate you. Right. What? You gotta learn. You know, I, I just read um I like I listen to audiobooks. Yeah. I listened to uh, Donald Trump's book and I listened to Barack Obama's book. Yeah. You gotta learn, man. You gotta you gotta hear exactly. both sides. If if you don't understand, you can never make an educated decision. You don't gotta agree with everything you read. You don't gotta agree with everything you learn, but you have to at least learn. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's it's really interesting, and and even just the idea that there is two sides, right? Like, I mean, my my political view is I'm I'm libertarian because it's not <laughs> right to me that 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 that's more of a life philosophy. It made more yeah. sense to me. I was like. Okay, all this stuff lines up with what I think about the economy and money and and freedom and and how things should be. And so, yeah, I'm not I'm not one of them because maybe I would have identified more on on one side and then hate the other side. But it's like, no, actually, both of these both of these these parties are not are not serving my best interests. You know, both of them want to take my money and and imprison me and take away my freedom. So, you know, I mean that, I think that's, but, but, it, but I, it's, it's so funny. I was doing a video just the other day and I was talking about how awareness is secure to everything, right? It's like all the evil that we perceive in the world, it's a lack of awareness. Everything is a lack of awareness. And so the more aware that you become, which comes from educating yourself, reading, listening to audiobooks, you know, reading, you know, getting that kind of education. Like I like what you said, seeing both sides. I used to do this thing where I'd pair up audiobooks, kind of like what you did, where I had like I read this book, uh, How Not to Die about vegan lifestyle, you know, mm -hmm. plant based diet. And then I at the same time, I read a book uh, called um, uh, shoot, what was it? It was about uh, uh, fasting, but it was basically a carnivore diet type of, <laughs> of book. And it was like, you know what the over, and, but then I found the overlap between those books, which was yeah. really interesting, which was sugar. Everyone says sugar is bad. So it's like, okay, well that's the, you know, but there was so much to learn from, from listening to both sides, from becoming educated on those things. And, and, and most people, they, they don't just listen to, to one thing and then they, they parrot what they've heard. And uh, you know, that becoming aware is, is so key because then it, it changes everything. That's it's the, the, the source of all of the, the bad stuff that we have in life is, is just a lack of awareness. The more aware you are, that you, yeah. you wouldn't harm people if you were aware. You wouldn't harm yourself if you were aware, you know? Yeah, I 100% agree. Education, you know, awareness, it, it is so important across every aspect of the world. <laughs> So what what kind of put you on the path of of learning? Because you know, like like you said, I mean, even your your title of minority mm -hmm. mindset. Most people don't they don't get this. They don't figure out these ways of thinking. Was it books? I think for a, for for me, a large part of it was books. Was when I really started becoming an avid reader. Was it something else? Did you meet someone, a business, an entrepreneur, or someone? What what was it that kind of put you on this path? So, yeah, I th I think I always had this entrepreneurial bug but it was always suppressed. I grew up in a traditional Indian house where I was supposed to be a doctor. Yeah. And when I say that, it wasn't just a recommendation that, oh, just Preet, you should become a doctor. No, it was like, my parents came to this country with next to nothing um, and they worked very hard. And so when you work that hard, you want your kids to become successful. And the traditional way you become successful, at least in the eyes of you know most people, 
is study hard in school and get a good job. And for people in the Indian culture, that means study hard in school and become a doctor because doctors right. on paper look like they're extremely financially successful. Now, I don't know any better, so I, I, I agreed with that. But in the back of my mind, I always had this entrepreneurial bug. I was mowing people's lawns when I was like 10 years old. I was delivering newspapers when I was in elementary school. And, you know, these things were always discouraged because, you know, my parents wanted me to become successful. I mean, they said, you need to become a doctor. This is how you do it. And, you know, they did it out of love. Like They, they just didn't know any better. And uh, when I was in middle school, to put it in perspective, I was uh, almost failing my uh, English class. I got like a D in my English class. You know, English was my second language. And I, I was just not doing good. And so my dad got me a tutor. But he didn't get me a tutor for English. He got me a tutor for the MCAT, which is the medical college admission test, the test you take towards the end of your college career. I was got a tutor when I was like 12 years old in middle school. Uh, so this is how serious it was about me becoming a doctor. Wow. Yeah. But I, I started to kind of learn about these entrepreneurial ventures, and I started working at weddings. Uh, I played an Indian drum called the Dole at weddings, Indian weddings. And I got to meet a lot of the DJs. And then me and these DJs had the idea of hosting teen parties for kids in my high school. So my junior and senior year, I started hosting teen parties. And, you know, I started to think a little bit different than the majority of people. Yeah. But it really shifted when I went to college because mm -hmm. I didn't know what to expect in college. I didn't know anybody uh, who was close to me that went to college in America. And no one really gave me guidance like that. So my parents didn't know. So I go to college thinking that everybody spends Friday nights in the chemistry lab studying and doing reactions. <laughs> yeah. I get to college. Some chemical reactions, man. <laughs> yeah. Every, everybody is partying, and I could not believe it. I was like, none of you guys have any money. Yeah. And you're blowing all of this. And so I, I was like, you know, it was crazy. I, I couldn't believe it. And so now I was like, you know, why don't I take – my teen party business idea when I was in high school and take this to college. So then my freshman year in college started knocking on the doors of clubs and bars and venues and asked them, Hey, can I uh, host a party here? Yeah. A lot of them said, yeah. And so, you know, I, I was able to work out deals, right? I didn't have to put any money out of my pocket. We just did a revenue share agreement. Yeah. And now all of a sudden I'm a freshman in college. And I started this event planning company and we started by hosting parties. We started hosting parties, concerts and shows uh, towards the end. And that's when I realized that, I don't think like the majority of people, the majority of people are blowing their money at all these um, parties and I'm the one hosting the parties. So that's when I really started to think different. And then I got involved in real estate and, and a whole bunch of things, tried a whole bunch of businesses. I don't have any business education. So the way I learned was by trying businesses, starting them and, and making a whole bunch of mistakes, losing yeah. money and, and doing all that. But that was how I learned. And, you know, yeah, I did read books. I started, I never read books until I started uh, reading money books. Um, yeah. And, you know, I did have, I start as you start to kind of shift your mind in the direction, you start to meet people like that. Cause I didn't, I didn't really have a mentor per se. Uh, it was, I read books and all of a sudden I'm exposing my mind to a whole new world. So that's kind of how, for me, I started learning. Now we have YouTube and, and it is such a powerful tool because I mean, you can learn anything you want from people that are actually doing what they teach. And we really started to see the, the power of this, I think, in 2020 when the pandemic hit, because you had people paying 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars a year for their college educations. And now all of a sudden you're going to school online. You're right. watching it in Zoom meetings or you know, web meetings, whatever it is. And you're in 60 grand a year to do that. Versus you can go into YouTube and watch whatever you want right. for free uh, and you can learn from somebody you actually want to learn from. When I was in college, I took calculus. I love math. I, I loved math when I was in high school, took this calculus class in college. My teacher had a very strong accent who I couldn't understand, which, which is okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having an accent, but I couldn't understand what the teacher said. And on top of that, the teacher sucked at teaching. Yeah. I couldn't, I, nothing made any sense. And, and, you know, like in that class, there was such a curve where, if you got a 50% on an exam, it was an A+. Plus. Yeah, if you got a 40%, it's it's still an A or A-. Minus. And how does that make – I mean, it's like it didn't make any sense yeah, to me. You're not learning anything in that case. Yeah, it's well, like even it, if you're it, passing. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, you could walk away with a 20% and still pass with like a yeah. decent grade. And, and so it's like 
if you want to learn something, you really want to learn something, you have teachers yeah. who are willing to teach you on YouTube. I ended up going to law school because my parents weren't happy that uh, I wasn't going to become a doctor. And so I settled at <laughs> law school, but, but I went to law school part time and did my business yeah. on the other part. But, you know, studying for these law school exams and the bar exam were hard. And I, I slept through a good number of classes because I was working all day and night. But I I, uh, I went on to YouTube and there was like teachers there teaching so many things. I mean, it, it taught me how to pass the bar exam. I, I learned oh, so wow. much stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And they teach it so well They, you know, they'll have diagrams and they'll break it down and you can rewind and watch it. and like things that you don't understand concepts. You're not the only one. And then they'll break it down. And these are people who actually love what they do because nobody goes onto YouTube or at least you should. Nobody goes onto YouTube, make money, because if you yeah. do, you're not going to succeed. If somebody's right. going onto YouTube to make money, you're not going to find them because YouTube knows. And, and the people that are there just for the, you know, I'm going to get rich. They never go anywhere on YouTube. So the people okay. that you see, like, you know, on YouTube, these are people that that love what they do and they're doing this for a passion first. Obviously, yeah, you know, the, the value you provide comes with the money as a byproduct. But people, the people that you're seeing succeed, these are people that are doing this out of love and passion. They actually care about what they're teaching and you don't have to like your teacher. I mean, you, you can just go to somebody else. Like, if you don't like what I say, just watch somebody else. It, you know, you're not going to offend me. Like, it just, you don't have to. You, you can find what you like and learn from people that you like and, and learn what you want. And this is what's, you know, it's it's so powerful for the people that use it. You know, I, I, I didn't know about cryptocurrency. It's hard to learn. I mean, if, you, if you're starting and, and there's, amazing people on youtube that have like crash courses on crypto and i would just sit there binge these videos to learn what is blockchain what is bitcoin versus ethereum what's the stable coin what's DeFi, and you start to learn and you're like oh okay now i'm more aware and it's just it's an easy way for you to learn anything you want and you know that ignorance of i don't understand or i don't know it it, it really just falls onto you now because you have access to learn and it's your choice to learn now you can go into youtube and before blogs are hard to read at least for me I, you know i'm a slow reader <laughs> reading through blogs is a chore watching youtube yeah. videos is so much more enjoyable to me yeah yeah no you're absolutely right it, it's crazy how you know we're, we're you know u university type of education systems are becoming obsolete because it's not necessary anymore it's not necessary it, it's it's even amazes me that we don't have that we have so people hate when i say this but such redundant redundancy in lower education right all the teachers we have here and it's like can we not build software or course or you know even multiple courses in order to you know facilitate this do we need so many uh, grade school teachers. I mean, you know, obviously there's more than just educating happening there, but, but still it's like, you know, this is, if you re-envision the system today based on the technology, you certainly wouldn't organize it the way that it is and have, you know, uh, you know hundreds of thousands of teachers teaching the same thing to, to kids, you know, at the university level, I think people can get more on board with that because it's not as much of a shocker, but, you know, I think the whole education system is, is up for, being revamped because information is available to you and also not not just information is available to you but you don't need to know things you don't need to know about necessarily history and science and you know, i mean as you want to but it's more about specialization today right it, it's like you need to know the thing that you're going to do a well-rounded education is not not as important as it as it used to be you know, as a as a human, sure, you can gain that information yourself, and it's it's useful to have knowledge in a lot of different areas. But as far as like our education systems, they're not producing the the result that's getting people what they actually need to perform. Like no one is becoming rich from the education system in the U.S. Right? All these things that that you and I have learned uh, in order to invest, to make money, to build businesses, all that stuff we we didn't learn in the the traditional education system. Yeah, I mean, the school system, I think there's two aspects to it. You have the education aspect, and then you have the social aspect. Yeah. I loved college. I didn't really learn much, but I loved college. I mean, I, 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 I'm so happy that I went because, you know, I started my first real businesses in college. I, I met really cool people, and I had a lot of fun. I mean, I was working my butt off in my businesses, but it, it was it was 
a great time. And yeah, and I, I you know, I, I'm kind of old in that. You know, I like I like that social aspect. I, you know, I like meeting my friends. I'm not a gamer, uh, so you know, it's, I I don't really, I, I don't vibe with that. Uh, just talking to people digitally. I like to hang yeah. out with my friends and just sit sure. there and laugh. That's just that's the way I am, you know. But um, that social aspect is really important. But the way that we teach needs to change. We need to really push creativity. We need to push innovation. Uh, not just because it'll help people get jobs, but even if you look at it more on an economic level, you know, we talked about our national debt a little bit earlier. Right. Yeah. Our national debt is so high which is one of the reasons why the government is really pushing uh, growth and they're trying to do that through stimulating. But the reason why we need growth is because we need a bigger economy to support our growing national debt and our growing expenses. Now, the way you sustainably grow an economy is not through cheap debt and money printing. Right. The way you grow an economy is through innovation. innovation. Yeah. And we need to really uh, encourage this and foster this and, and, and we need to push people being okay making mistakes. And that again, it goes back to is I mean, is it the school system? Uh, I mean, I think we need to push some sort of creativity, but is it capable of doing that? I don't know. I mean, they're always gonna have certain people who are entrepreneurs that are gonna think different, right? Like, you know, you, you and I said, like I went through a lot of schooling, but I did not use my traditional schooling. But it's hard. There's a lot of people that have that entrepreneurship within them, but you know, we have the fear of what if I make a mistake? Exactly. How yeah. am I going to be able to feed my family? And if the, if we are able to kind of show people earlier on that making mistakes are okay, take your risks early. What if we encourage people in the four years of college to go out? If you want to be an entrepreneur, go and start a business. And then you have the support system. You have the support of, of advisors, of marketers, of investors. Of, uh, and you can have these like support systems where now – if you have questions, you have people that you can talk to and kind of just encourage entrepreneurship in that way. And it's not not everybody has to be an entrepreneur. It's not for everybody, but there's so many ways to encourage people to to think different, to just challenge our beliefs. And I think that's you know it's just what we need to do because we assume that once we start doing something, we can't change, and that's because yeah. we're not willing to challenge our own beliefs. It is never too late to change, but we have to be willing to change the way we think. Exactly. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it's a different way of, of looking at things. I'm going to actually, I'm going to ask you a question about this in this, in a second for, for helping people to figure this out before we do though. I just want to, while you guys are watching this, make sure that you, you click the link down below. I put in the description to subscribe to minority mindset channel. Congratulations, by the way, on hitting over a million subscribers. That's uh, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Huge accomplishment on YouTube, but guys go, go subscribe. And then also, uh, now you've got you've got uh, an ebook because I'm sure a lot of people want to know more about you know what you're investing in your your strategy. So you have an, an ebook, a, a free one about stock trading, and then you've you've got a program if someone wants to take the next step and, and actually like follow along and, and learn how to do this yeah. with a community of investors as well. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that too. Sure, sure. So minority minds, like we said, is a financial education and media company started off as an Instagram page, go to a YouTube channel. Now we really kind of expanded to a full education and media company. So what that means is obviously we have YouTube, we have different YouTube channels. We have the main minority mindset channel. We have a minority mindset news channel. Where we post daily news updates in the top finance and business world. We have a, a Spanish channel where you can watch your content in Spanish um, for people who are in the Latin speaking countries to help spread that financial education. We have uh, our blog at theminoritymindset.com where we publish articles daily on what's financial education stuff. And then you know we have like more resources to help you pick something and learn. Like uh, we have a free ebook on stock market investing. If you want to learn to be a better stock market investor, it's one of the first things you need to know is how do you find the stock market strategy? Now, I talked about a little bit earlier in this video. What is your goal? Your goal is going to change with time, but you know. Right. People go into the stock market thinking, I'm going to pick a hot stock, make some money. Well, that's not a strategy. Right. So you need to understand what is your strategy. And you know, we don't talk about trading. I focus more on the investing side of how do you now invest your money for the long term. But even within that, there are so many different strategies. And if you want to be an active investor, you want to pick companies, you need to know how to read earning statements. And you need to know how to uh, understand cash flow statements. Where is the cash going? How do you read the stuff? And so we have a free ebook uh, on, on that at minoritymindset.com slash stocks. 
And for people who really want some extra help, we have a program called Stock Market Insiders, which is a stock market, essentially a coaching program. And every week you get access to a group stock market education session from one of our coaches. And in this session, you get to learn about a new stock market lesson. So look, let's just say we're learning about how to read a cash flow statement so you'll walk through how to read a cash flow statement and you'll do this with uh, a coach as a group session they'll do it with you and because it's live you can see how what you're talking about today will relate to the world so for example let's say you learn how to read a cash flow statement and three days ago tesla released their earnings call well what you can do what we might do in that call is then go through the cash flow statement and then actually walk through tesla's cash flow statement and analyze it what does this mean how do you understand this and talk about that so you get these weekly coaching calls and you get access to an exclusive community of investors. You can ask your questions. You can talk to other people. You can network. You can talk about investment ideas. And we try to keep this program very affordable. It's less than the cost of dinner for two. It's $47 a month. Um, and you, you have, we have a free 10 day trial for it. You can, uh, you know, so the minority mindset.com slash, I think the stock market insiders, but uh, the, the reason that's, I really like this is because one, you have real teachers. I mean, our stock market teachers are people that have been investing for years, have had success, good, good, good success and have the money to back them. I mean, these are coaches who have at least hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in the market themselves. So these are people that are, you know, doing this, not just teaching it. And, and that's one thing that was important to me and uh, well, very important to me. And then just having that, continuous access to them because you know and even within our own business i've taken a ton of classes which have been good but the things that have been the most effective for me were like the coaching and consulting yeah. that i've gotten where you're getting like you know, you're, you're meeting with your coach or consultant every month or every two weeks where you keep you know they keep looking at you and, and analyzing what you're doing and, and work with you in that way and so you know this is a kind of a, a more affordable way to do that in a group coaching session so that's that's what we have yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's great. I, I love that that idea, especially this the stuff around. So many people can't read cash flow statements and earning statements, and and I mean, even if even if you're just going to start a business, I live and die by my QuickBooks, my cash flow statements. I look at that every every month, break down every line item, and understand. It's so like, important. Yeah. Cash flow is the yeah. bloodline of your business. Exactly. Of any business. Exactly. And and I and you know, it's kind of funny. I have some masterminds and, and groups and stuff, and I have entrepreneurs in there. And a lot of like the number one factor I can tell you whether someone's gonna succeed as an entrepreneur is whether they have books. <laughs> whether they keep books. If they don't keep books and they don't understand their books, they're ninety percent chance in my experience that they fail. But you know, the, the entrepreneurs that keep books and understand their cash flow, they 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 succeed because they have time to prepare ahead of time. They see disaster coming and they can avoid it. So, yeah. Yeah. So very critical. Yeah. So guys join it, go check out, you know, again, you know, Jasper has brilliant knowledge on, in, in this, this subject area. He's got a lot of good teachers in there and, you know, I, I agree. Like I said, you know, I've been watching his channel. I agree with so, so much, almost everything that, that he says as far as finances, because it, it's, it's, a, it's a different way of thinking. Um, speaking of that real quick, before we, wrap this up here what are some of the resources people can get as far as you know i always recommend like thomas soul you know uh, basic economics what are some of the foundational books like that or or maybe or even like or even channels that videos you have on your channel or or anything resources where people can get that foundational knowledge because i feel like there's there's this this foundation of, of of stuff that you need to know in order to really get what's what's going on where 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 do you recommend or what kind of books do you recommend or resources? So we actually just put together an entire um, like article series. And when I say article, it's actually kind of like mini book series. Uh, oh, these nice. articles okay. are massive um, on our website. If you go to our website, the majority mindset.com and you click the money one one tab, it just took us almost a year to put together. Um, okay. And it literally walks you through the 10 steps of kind of money from uh, school all the way through like retirement and, and, and being financially free. So you, you'll start from school and getting your first job to um, your first investment account to your first bank account. And, and it literally will walk you through everything, the money 101 from the basics to the very advanced stuff. And it's all laid out there and it, it will walk you through 
all of that. Now, in terms of books, I mean, they're just it just depends on what you want to learn. I mean, there's there's books on money, there's books on real estate, there's books on stocks, there's books on the dollar. There's a ton. I mean, there you know, you can start on YouTube. You can, there's just there's an infinite amount of things out there. What about for the like and that's awesome resource. I just put the link in there. Uh, that's really good for the like how econ economics works because you know there's like what you learned in school about macro and microeconomics and it's it, it <laughs> it's it's like missing a lot of the real you know it, and it's it's not um it's not yeah. definitely not austrian economics it's you know it, it's the same kind of stuff that the federal reserve is telling us so do you have like or, or do you cover that also in there because i know you've got some stuff on we do cover the basics in there i cover oh. um you know my thoughts on economics on the channel I you know, to be honest, I didn't really learn economics in school. I took one class on it in college and I slept through almost all of it because I didn't understand <laughs> anything the teacher was telling me. I did really bad in that class. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, in terms of like just understanding money, I think that will give you a good baseline of that. There's a book called The Creature from Jekyll Island. Um, oh, okay. yeah. And it walks you through the Federal Reserve Bank, the dollar, taxes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a very insightful book on all of that and i highly recommend that book but you know in terms of economics it's really just experience and then you know learning from people that have been around you know i've read warren buffett's book uh yeah. snowball which is it's not a an investing book it's more of a biography but you learn about what he's gone through and, and you see economy from his perspective for you know for a long time uh read people like ray dalio uh yeah. read his articles read his books i mean these are these are people that have Ray Dalio is, is the founder of a uh, hedge fund called Bridgewater Associates, one of the most successful hedge funds in history. And the reason that he became successful, according to him, is because they studied thousands and thousands of data points from history, ancient history yeah. to, to recent history. And so just learning from the things that they have uh, seen, and they have tons of articles, they have books, and, and just, just learning from people that have 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 learned and done it yeah okay awesome awesome uh, have you read anything have you read any of uh taleb stuff are you a fan of i have not read any of those I, books. I i would recommend i think you would you would love uh nicholas T taleb he, he's got um uh black swan i think this is his famous book but uh anti-fragile he's got a bunch of books i think you would love it based on sure. i'll be happy to yeah. check it out yeah i think you would love that a lot but um, yeah, so, well, thanks. Thanks for coming on here, Jasper. This has been awesome. This is great to talk about all this stuff. And hopefully we've got some people interested in, in learning more because this is one of those things where, you know, I, I'm glad you're in agreement with me about this because I preach it to everyone. It's like, you have to know this. You cannot. So many people are like, I'll just, I'll just, I got, I'll just get a financial advisor. And I'm like, no, this is, this is like your finances, your health, you know, what you put in your body, you know, these things are the things 100%. that you have to know. You can't just rely on someone else. You can't 100%. just trust a doctor. You can't just trust a financial advisor because they don't have your best interests at heart and you don't know what, what they don't know, you know, so. Exactly. Uh, you got to be educated so you can make the best decisions when you go talk to these people too. Exactly. Yeah. All right, Jasper. Thanks again. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to definitely do this again. Thank you, man. It was a pleasure. I really appreciate right. it. Take care.